Want to know when to kill and optimize and scale your Facebook ads? Let's get into it right now. All right guys, so welcome to today's video on when to kill and optimize your Facebook ads for beginners. This also includes scaling. Before we do get into today's video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell down below. And follow me on Instagram, at Ricky Hayes IG, where you get up close and personal with me, guys. It's a lot of fun. Moving on, so when to kill and optimize Facebook ads, uh, and optimize Facebook ads for beginners, okay? This is a question I get asked a lot, so we're gonna run through a brief overview of how this works. Now, before you do need to do, there's a few things we need to do first, and okay? it's ne You need the following columns added first to use properly. These are the minimum extra columns that you need that the uh, default Facebook interface doesn't actually really have uh, to, to help you, okay? So you need purchase, return on ad spend, or ROAS. Um, also in Facebook, it's called uh, website uh, ROAS, I believe. Um, unique click-through rate unique link click and add to cart. So let me explain what unique click through rate is. Unique click through rate is basically the amount of impressions divided by the amount of clicks. Okay, and unique ones because there's a lot of people that will click it multiple times. So Facebook will say, you know, uh, one session per person. That's why the unique link unique click through rate will be uh, lower than click through rate because uh, the same people can click the same ad multiple times, okay? And so that'll boost that one. So I use unique click-through rate because if it's um, because it's a lower, but if it meets the threshold, it means that you're getting much better traffic, okay? It's really important. Um, and unique link clicks, again, is the exact same. Just to actually see the amount of actual unique link clicks, all right? And it's the exact same methodology and you add to cart. That's basically all you really need to get started. All right, so I'm gonna quickly show you show you um, how to do that. So to do that, you just go in your business manager and um, I've just got my um, fake business manager here, just test one. Um, but basically, uh, you wanna, so you got your columns here. These columns are the default ones. You can see I've made, uh, pre-made this column here. So you can see how uh, it's called CPC or cost per link click. You got your CPM, oh, I forgot to add that in, sorry. Um, but I'm going to show you how this works right now. So basically, let's let's just choose this one. So I can just show you. You choose custom columns. You can see how you got your columns there. You want to add website. You type website. You go add to cart. Okay. So you want add to cart now. Wait. Facebook now does this. It's a little bit annoying. Uh, no. Is um, untick these two. They're not useful. You want your website add to cart, and you want. Uh, purchase ROAS is what they now call it. Okay, so you want your purchase ROAS. You only want that one. Um, and purchases. Okay, and you want just purchases. Okay, so now we've got those and you want to put in click. Okay, so you got unique link clicks and unique unique CTR. Okay, unique click through rate. All right, that's pretty much what you need. Um to get started, all right? And then you just you make sure you just save it. So save it as a, a custom column, all right? And there you go. So you got your budget, your results, your cost per result, your amount spent, your add to cart. Um, those can be the same thing. It's it's misleading, but make sure to add that one. Uh, we can always remove it. You want your purchase ROAS. You probably want to change this around to how you want it. Um, I probably have done this wrong, I think, in terms of I probably haven't. Oh. Don't know why it's doubled up. Doesn't have it. It's weird. Anyway, but you can see uh, website ROAS purchases. Again, I don't know why it's doubled up and done website purchases. Unique link clicks and click through rate. So you probably want to. <coughs> Sorry. First time I've sneezed in ages. Damn it. Anyway, um. <laughs> so I know a few people who will laugh at that. So you're welcome. <laughs> Um, so you just want to change these around and those are the columns you need. Okay, guys, it's really important if you don't have those columns, then you're not going to be able to know how to kill. All right, so it's really important whether you're a beginner or advanced, you have the right column set so you know what data to look at because if you don't know, if you're not looking at the right data, you can't make uh, informed decisions, can you? All right, so moving on. So now that we know that, you have your columns set up. 
So you need to follow a strict guide on when to kill ad sets, okay? So as part of this, it's really important that you follow a strict guide. Now, my strict guide that I use as an overview here is um, starting out, you kill ad sets after 48 hours maximum if you're in the testing phase. Okay, so if you're using three different audiences to the same creative and verify results, okay? So you find a product, you put it on your website, you um, put it on Facebook, you um, make three different ad sets with di to different audiences, two to 10 mil, okay? And make the, to the same creative or ad, what the customer actually sees, and you schedule it for midnight. So you're hitting three different audiences for the same type of product to try and gauge if you if you have hit the right mark, okay? Because th at the end of the day, it, that's what it comes down to. Okay, so you're on to a winner if you have one, obviously sales. If you have your UCPC or unique cost per click is less than a dollar. You wanna try and always aim for less than a dollar cost per click uh, because the less the cost you per click, the more chances you have of a sale, okay? Simple as that. Uh, multiple add to carts as well. So you know you can see across multiple ad sets, add to carts, that's a sign that people are not just clicking your ad, but they're going and they're actually quite interested at the point of clicking the add to cart button, okay? So they're taking the next step. And your CTR is above 1%. So again, CTR is basically the impressions divided by the amount of clicks in this case, unique link clicks, um, is above 1%. You always wanna try and aim for above 1%. Um, anything over 1% is fantastic. I've seen four, five, six percent Don't, you're never gonna get like 10, 20%, okay? So just get that out of your mind. If you don't have sales on a product after 48 hours, you kill it and test another product. Do not overthink, okay? Do not think too deeply about it, okay? I get this question asked a great deal. Don't think too much about it. It's not that you've done something horribly wrong. It's most of the time, it's just the product, okay? Okay? Simple as that. Um, if you have a sale on an ad set, leave it for another 24 hours minimum to see if you get another ad. Uh, another, another ad set, another sale. Sorry, it must have been another mindset when I wrote that. And uh, basically, if you get a sale on it, let's say at the 36 hour mark, it can be a fluke sale. I've had hundreds of ad sets where they just get a single sale and never another one. And why that is, who knows? Okay, it can be just a fluke. We all get fluke sales. You, when you get into this, you're gonna get fluke sales. You're just gonna to have to get used to it. If you get a sale, but you don't get another, don't don't dwell on it. Too many people dwell on it and waste too much of their time. And that's why you don't see results. Okay, so before you optimize and scale, optimization, you need to have the column set up properly. As I said, you optimize when you know you're onto a winner and am at BEP at minimum, a break even point. Okay, so when you're testing, it's fine to be a little bit under because you, you're testing, right? So if you've spent 50 bucks and you've gotten uh, four sales and you've lost five bucks, but you found one ad set that actually has three of the sales and the other two was just costing you, well, you're actually still onto a winner, ain't you? Because that one ad set you know is actually doing well, okay? So this is these are the tricks you have to get used to. And knowing your break-in point is pretty important. So basically, it's just your sale price, uh, and then in brackets, your sale price again divided by your product price, including uh, e packet shipping to UK. So if you know most of us are going to be do you know you should be using e packet, which is the fastest form of shipping. And I choose the UK because it's usually out of the big five, the most expensive. Now I marked mainly the US, and the more I do it, the more I'm just marketing to the US, right? But you want to account for worst case scenario realistically. So like to the US, let's say it's average about two to three dollars now for e packet, whereas to UK it's around the four to five dollars. Okay, so you basically just make it a little bit harder for yourself, but it actually works better for you. Okay, does that make sense? So an example is if you have a $39 product, that's the sale price or listed price on your website. Okay, that's important. That's listed on your website. You're selling it for $39.99. Okay, so you do $39.99 divided by brackets, $39.99 divided, uh, sorry, minus the amount the product cost, including uh, e-packet shipping to the UK. So if the product costs you five bucks, and it costs $4.75, then it's $9.75. So you can see there, 39.99 divided by bracket, 39.99 takes 9.75 equals 1.32, okay? And 1.32 is your break even point, or ROAS, okay? So when, you know how I said your website ROAS, that's what that translates to. So if you know that, then you know what your break even point on Facebook is. So if you've got 2.0 and it's 1.32, you can actually still keep scaling, okay? It's really important. A lot of people think that you have to have over 2.0 to be profitable, that's not true. Um, sometimes it has to be 3.0 to be profitable, sometimes it can be 
point eight because it depends on are you buying a shit ton of the product and you got a massive discount? Is the product just incredibly cheap and you can you can uh, sell it right you know ten times more than the price it costs you? Or you're doing uh, your upselling process is working really well. There's a lot of factors that contribute to it, but in a very basic beginner sense, that's where you want to start. Okay, guys, and uh, and that really simplifies it for you. Okay, so how to optimize is actually really easy. Um, I get this asked uh, a lot. It is a, still a skill um, that, um, you know, it's something that you're gonna have to learn, okay? But basically to optimize, you drill down, okay? So if I'm to show you, to drill down is, so you've got your columns, is, is your breakdown. I call it drill down, but basically breakdown. So you basically wanna go by country, okay? So if you're going to the big five, you want to know what country is doing best first. In most cases, it's going to be the US. Okay, this is an expert tip. But anyway, you want to have a look there because you might be surprised. You might find, for whatever reason, Australia is doing well. Like, for instance, if you're doing um, um, swimwear, right? This time of year, it's like a thousand degrees outside in the land of deserts we call Australia. And, uh, you know, so women uh, or men are wanting to go to the beach. So they're buying swimwear. So you might find, whereas in America, um, America, you know, they're cold. Why would they buy that? Okay, so, you know, like, it, it pro that's probably a really bad example because surely you wouldn't be marketing to the US for swimwear. Anyway, if you are, don't. Anyway, not this time of year. But my point is, you, you, you go by country. Now, you can actually go by age and gender. I've been using that more and more. Uh, but you can go, uh, typically, I've gone country, age, gender, impression device, placement. Okay. And those, this is why you have a large audience of two to 10 mil when you're doing ad sets. I didn't mention that, did I? Anyway, um, and uh, basically then by that point, because you have a large audience, let's say of 8 million people, if you drill down by then country, age, gender, impression device and placement, uh, you've taken out 90% of that audience pretty much. But this is why you want a large audience because if you're taking out 90% of that audience and it's uh, 8 million people, I don't know what, uh, anyway, like you've got a couple hundred thousand people you can still market to because the problem is you're going to burn through the audience, okay? So that's really important for your short term and long term, right guys? I'm just trying to help give you the whole picture, right? So that's it. So you go um, country, age, gender, device, placement. Each time you duplicate on five bucks, Yes, five buck budgets work extremely well, okay? Put that for you to rest and schedule for midnight. Repeat until you drill down, which depends on your audience size. Again, two to 10 mil, you'll be fine, okay? And most likely at that point, you'll be looking at using things like lookalikes and that as well, but that's not what this is about. Go watch my videos on that somewhere down below. <laughs> How to scale, okay? So there's actually two ways that I use of scaling. Uh, this is the broad overview is, um, so to scale, again, people seem to get in this, oh, I need to just bump up the budget. No, <laughs> you couldn't be f even 10% correct there. And even if you are uh, and it works, you're wasting a lot of money, okay? The aim of this game is to make money, right? So there's two ways. So first you wanna duplicate and double the budget, flat duplicate. Now, yes, okay, that contradicts what I just said, but in some cases that does work. That's why you wanna test and duplicate that. But so like let's say it's on five bucks, you do it to 10 bucks. It's not gonna break your piggy bank um, and see if it can be scaled upwards. Because some ad sets can't, some actual product can't be scaled six product, six figures, some seven on the rare instance, you know, seven, some I've even heard eight, okay? So it really is just dependent on the product and, and there's no, no way of gauging that, right? So that's really important. So you duplicate it. And if it keeps working, you just do that, right? But at the same time, you're also optimizing. So if you know you got a ten dollar budget and it's working there, and you got ten sales, let's say, why would you just not optimize it? it? Makes no sense, right? You want to optimize it because, you know, if you haven't optimized it and you're targeting the big five countries, guaranteed, you know, two or three of those countries are just wasting ten to twenty percent of your budget. So all you do is you duplicate it, take out those three countries, and there you go. Ten to twenty percent of the budget is now allocated to countries that are going to make you more money for less work. So it makes perfect sense. Okay, guys, it's not that hard. This is just a broad overview of that. I should have full screen that. I do apologize. Um, so the and the metrics that you use. Okay, so these are the metrics that you use. Is your as I said, these are the columns. Primarily your ROAS. You're gonna go off mainly by your purchases and ROAS at that point when you're optimizing and scaling. All right, that's pretty much it. You just, that's just what you're gonna do. And so uh, 
if it's you're going to go by those in that order you're not really going to use the unique link click uh click through rate at that point it's just an indicator because at that point you're probably split testing uh different creatives that's in another video i'm not going to explain that but basically you go off your ROAS. So again, we're using the example of 1.32 ROAS as the break in point. If we've got ad sets that are on $20 budget, or let's say like this one, $100 budget and draft, um, and they got a 2.2 ROAS, then yeah, then we can further optimize it by looking at the various metrics. So we use these columns and then we look at country and we can look, oh, okay, so the country Australia actually has not two point because it's going to be the overall but then when you drill down you're going to see oh, Australia compared to US okay so US has 2.9 whereas Australia has 6.4 so you're like oh beautiful all right well duplicate it just make it specifically to Australia duplicate it three times on the same budget uh, sorry five dollar budget at midnight and the way you go and that's where you sort of start you're gonna to have to build up those skills, but that's generally what you do, guys. Okay, that that is the process of um, of how you test to then uh, scale and optimize and scale all at the same time. And that that's that's a sort of overview of how I do it for the cold traffic ads. Okay, guys. So I hope this has been helpful. We'll try and keep it short and sweet. If you did like today's video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And hit that notification bell for as soon as I provide my latest video. Follow me on Instagram at Ricky Hayes IG. And there's also a cheat sheet down below, 100% free cheat sheet for 10 winning products that, as examples that you can use right here and now, guys. All right. So that's pretty much it from this video, guys. You all have a lovely day. Thanks for your time. Take care and goodbye.